how could I ask Google that question? Well, if I try to describe it in words, what would I say? I would say there's a guy, he's on a path on an island with a beach behind him, a rocky cliff. Well, it's pretty hard to describe this in a way that Google could understand. But I have the picture. And if I have the picture, why not just use it? And that's why today we're also announcing search by image on desktop. I have with me here Peter Lindsley, our lead product manager on image search, who's going to help us see some demos of how this works. Okay, thanks, Johanna. So let's just pull up that image we were looking at. And I want to give you a little bit of the backstory behind this image. This actually came from a software engineer at Google. His name is Gabe. And he was on holiday in Greece 10 years ago, um, island hopping. And he took a whole lot of digital photographs. And fast forward 10 years, he was going through his collection. And he couldn't quite recall where this image was taken. Now, how would you normally try and solve this problem? You'd probably show it to a bunch of friends, much like, much like I, ask, I might ask you guys right now, does anybody recognize this place? But what is the metaphor when you have that query for a search engine? Perhaps what you want to do is to be able to pick up the image, drop it in the search box, and get results. Ooh. Pretty cool. So let's take a look at exactly what's going on here. As Johanna mentioned earlier, this is an image that hasn't been published online. We do not have this image in our index. Yet we were somehow able to figure out this is in fact near Kimani, island in Greece. We've returned authoritative web results as Wikipedia there, so you can go off and learn more about it. And we've also returned visually similar images, which appear to be the same island, but take photographs presumably taken by different people. Pretty neat. Can you show us another example? Sure. So we have another good example that came from internal testing. This rather blurry looking logo um, was picked up by Jack, a sales engineer at Google, at a conference that he attended several years ago. And there was something about the logo that caught his eye. He had long wondered about the origin. So again, during the internal testing of search by image, he was able to pick it up, drop it in the search box, and there's the answer right there. It turns out this is the logo from the Hong Kong Monetary Authority. What's really cool is you can click on these results here and verify that, in fact, that is the case, right from the horse's mouth. So Peter, these examples you've shown have been interesting, but I'm wondering if this technology can help me with the problem that I have. So at, at Google and at work, there's all these pictures floating around. They have cute little animals on them, and they have these block white letters with, um, with captions on them. And I'm trying to figure out what's going on here. Sometimes I feel like an old lady at work, and I just want to know what, uh, what this is all about. OK, well, I think I know what you're talking about. Unfortunately, because I anticipated the question, I prepared this for you earlier today. <laughs> now, some of you may recognize this guy, some of you don't. I get bored of these images all the time. Um, so we'll go ahead. Uh, I have to admit, you know, it's very difficult to stay on top of all these uh, latest internet memes. But let's go ahead and drag and drop this into the query box. So next time, Johanna, you come across an image like this, just drop it in a search by image, and you'll get results. So by looking through the results page, we can see that this is the why you know guide. Um, and you can click on know your meme and find out more about it, more about the origin, um, why it went popular, how it went popular. And I want you to look at the visually similar images here. This is interesting, because this is where you kind of get the crux of it. This is an image, an internet meme, that gets reused, where people change the text across the top and the bottom to add their own kind of funny captions. But what's really important to note here is that despite this being uh, the meme that I gave was you know, directed to Johanna, but the, the similar images are in fact different uh, variations of the same meme. It's almost like you were agnostic to the text that you see there. So Ahmed talked about breaking down barriers to knowledge, but what seems really important here is that Google can also make me cooler. Peter, can you help us, um, Mike talked about the technology behind search by voice. Can you help us understand the technology by search by image? Sure, so the search by image uses a lot of the same features you see in Google Goggles on the, on the phone, except it enhances that for the web scale. Here's how it works. We take an image, we break it down into fundamental features, whether it be points or lines, shapes, texture, and so on and so forth. This then, then formulates a query, which we send to our back end against the billions of images we have, as we found on the web. This then returns results, which we can rank to the end user, something like this. Now, just to wrap up, I want to tell you a little bit about how this feature is uh, getting rolled out. So it's rolling out globally on images.google.com um, over the next few days. And when you see a little camera icon in your, in your search box, that means you have access to search by image. And um, there are four ways. Could you remember that? Yeah, so there are four ways you can access this feature. You can copy and paste an image URL. 
Um, you can upload images directly from your desktop. And you can also drag and drop images right into the search box, as I did in the demo. And finally, we're also announcing Chrome and Firefox extensions, which means that search by images one click away from images as you discover them on the web. Thank you, Peter.